Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood, where hopefully Elfino has a plan. Uh, Doma Castle seems to be up since to some naughty business from what our intel tells us. We really need to invest in a megaphone or a cowbell or some kind of summoning system to say, hey, everyone get over here. If all are in agreement, I will outline my plan to retake Doma Castle. First, Lise and the Doman Irregulars will conduct a series of raids against Imperial targets throughout the surrounding area, with the aim of drawing the garrison's attention. Shortly thereafter, our Zayla allies will launch a surprise attack on the castle's airborne defenses. In this way, we will prevent the enemy's airships from rendering support and cut off one means of escape. Alize and I, together with the Shinobi, will exploit the ensuing chaos to infiltrate the moon gates and disable the Magitek field generators. Once the barrier is down, we will be free to cross the one river and reach Doma Castle. It is at this point that we must turn to our Confederate and Kojin allies. They will commence to bombard the castle with cannon fire while sailing west towards the Doman Enclave. Wait, the Enclave? Why would you want them to sail away from the castle? Because the Enclave is home to countless civilians. Once pressed, the Imperials may well think to take them hostage, and I would fain forestall any such attempt. After we have secured the Enclave, we may lay siege to Doma Castle directly. The main strength of the Doman Liberation Front, under Lord Hien's command, shall be committed to this endeavor, as will you and your redoubtable allies. The rest is simple. We scour the castle for the Viceroy, we find her, and we subdue her. Without their leader, what remains of the Imperial's morale will crumble, and they will surrender or attempt to flee. And Doma will be free. Your thoughts, Lord Hien? If any points were unclear or gave you cause for concern, I should be glad to go over them with you. Did you fall asleep on me, bruh? Nay, tis a fine plan. You have a talent for this. That much is plain. We shall carry out Alphano's plan to the letter. Time is of the essence, as you know, so let us each see to our respective preparations. Carry on. Okay, cool. Now, it's a real shame they don't really mention much of the Enclave before this point. I think it only gets, like, one minor mention. And that's possibly because we just simply don't have access to this place, uh, that place. And I should have mentioned at the beginning of the episode, and I didn't because I'm a DARP, is, yeah, we can fly in this zone now. I've taken care of all that other stuff off screen. However, we do not have free reign of the map, uh, even though some of this is activated because I went over in this area. But this part of the map is completely inaccessible to us simply because of the Magitek gates. And this little part right here, which... I always think of like right here and right here as a passageway, but no, it's in between them. These are where the gates lie, and they are preventing us from roaming freely between the northern and the southern half of the map. Like, we can't even, the only way to get from here to here is to go through the underwater passage. Uh, unless you obviously teleport, of course, but barring that, um, like, you can't fly over this area at all. Uh, there, there's just way too much mountainous terrain in, in the way, and it's way above the height of your max flying radius and such. So that'd make travel a bit easier. Partially on the grounds that flying is faster than mountain travel. And I won't have to worry about being stopped because for some reason mounts cannot swim on surface level in this game. And it really 
actually kind of suck. Yeah, they're good friends. I don't think anyone has anything different, but... Did I talk to you like two seconds ago or did I not? Oh, okay, or they do have different dialogue now. I'm glad I took the time to talk to people. Why are you so separated from everybody else? Like, are you just admiring your handiwork over here? Like, what? Or did I really just not talk to everybody before? I don't know. I'm a derp. I'm too lost in my own thoughts over here to pay attention to what's going on in front of me. Yeah, how the hell are you going to do that? Yeah, of course you were going to get Sid involved. You know, if we're going to put this plan into motion, maybe you thought about, about, thought about getting the paperwork before this meeting. Oh, you silly, silly boy. Hello, Tataru. Uh, you look different. Yeah, it was. We're done now. D did Alphano not tell you we were back and that I was the one coming to pick up the package? Well, he was here for most of that, sitting here with you, so... What the heck have you two been up to? Did I just see that right? Did you put him on a leash? Uh-oh. Did we have a missed delivery? Ah, crap. Well, at least he's lampshading on that, so that's good. Gotta keep the humor up. Okay. Good plan.
Well, you're blonde for one, so there's that. Alright, so where does there our omniscient map tell us to go? Alright. Not really familiar with half those teleports, so we're just gonna go the long way. Oh, actually, no, that's right next to the Aetherite Plaza, so we can just go there. Mr. Postman, where are you? Tataru, be nice. Oh, I, I wasn't told this guy was wearing glasses. Hi, have you seen a mailman around here? So you're not the guy. Okay, alright. If I were a mailman, where would I go? Now, is there a local post office I can go around here? So you are the person I'm looking for. Okay, well, t you delivered it to the wrong place. Okay, well, at least uh, we didn't have to make another trip. That's good. Hopefully you checked the address and gave me the right package this time. Be really terrible if you didn't. Of course, Tataru is no longer over there and she's already back, even though she had no way of knowing that we collected the parcel already. Isn't game design fun, you guys? Okay, so she couldn't find him, so that's why she came back. Well, I found him. Oh, don't even put that idea in my head. You know, that would have been really funny, too. I'm reminded of a line from him back in, uh, when we first met Matoya, how... I think you want to say it was Dad, but I'm not sure it would have had a fit if they, he, you know, saw all the books in Matoya's cave just strewn around like cheap romance novels. And, and what about Lise? Okay, can she get it regards to? And by the way, can we have an update on what is going on with like Thancred and Uriage and Yastola, who, you know, was kind of mortally wounded when I last left her? Um, can I have some updates on that? Maybe? No? Okay. Yes, then why are you sitting out here? No, I won't shut up about that. No, I won't. <laughs> Not as long as she's standing out here way the heck away from everyone else. 
I don't get it. Aww, see, even Yugiri wants to check up on her. Well, it probably was yesterday. I mean, I have the power of teleporting in whatever. Um... Yeah, so it turns out we may not need these documents, and we just need to hit it with a hammer, you know. But as to why they won't, you know, the solution is not just gonna be, you know, like, turn the thing off or whatever. It's probably not gonna be that easy, and, you know, the thing, you know, may have some kind of, like, self-destruct mechanism or backfire mechanism or... Or thing, you know, something that could go wrong. So we need to turn it off and turn it off the right way. You know what I mean? Because if it was so easy to just disable the darn thing, yeah, it probably still wouldn't be on to this day. Alright, so how much time do you need to look over this manual? Well, considering I was just there 10 seconds ago. I'm running! I'm running! Hi! I was just here, but hi! Okay. Can't let them get any comeuppance on us. Fly. Yeah, we're not walking anywhere. We're flying everywhere. Way, way easier to handle this this way. Let's see. Um, okay. Not you go this way, I'll go that way. Okay then. So apparently both I have a map and you have a map now. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, she makes a good point. Like, Rugger's Reach happened while we were off plotting something against them. So... Did, did, did you just kill a 400 pound tiger in like 30 seconds? I am impressed.
So, yeah, the, the man she's talking about, and I've neglected to mention this until, because I knew this, this point was coming, was, yeah, the man she mentioned is, in fact, the Red Mage job trainer, and he will, if you've actually done the Red Mage job quest, he will mention, talk about uh, her to you, and, in fact, he knows who you are, um, or at least pretty quickly guesses who you are, because she's talked about you to him. So I like that, that little tidbit there, and I'm, and I'm glad they, they found a point in the main scenario to actually actively mention it and not put it in side dialogue. Well, you're surrounded by tigers. Okay, you're, you're really hardly being conspicuous here. Alright, so air we question, you know, how a teenage girl, you know, just dragged a tiger carcass like six times her size off the side of the road. Um, looks like we have other issues to discuss. Yeah, ain't no ordinary farmer gonna be carrying around a katana like that. Come on. Well, that's a bad opportunity for a flash for a flashback power to kick in, and it's been quite a while since this has actually happened to us. So one thing that I wondered going into this expansion nearly two years ago is I wanted to see a slightly more sympathetic side to the Empire. Um, because most of what we've seen so far... Yeah, we're, we're just going to stop this for a second and let me just get through this thought. Is, is just the military. We haven't really seen the common folk. Um... Now, with obviously El Amigo and with Doma, we've seen, you know, the citizens of, you know, annexed nations or all that, but they don't obviously consider themselves imperial citizens and whatnot. 
And I always wondered, like, is there a more positive side to the Empire outside of, you know, its military might and their, their you know, a lot of the people in the military, because conscripts or not, are just freaking assholes. They really just are. And I get part of my answer there, but even if only in one line of dialogue, if it's one good thing that the Empire has brought is laws for mandatory education. And... Granted, obviously, the people of the provinces aren't going to get as good of an education as the people who live, you know, back in Gallimald and are actually full-fledged born citizens and whatnot. But I am glad to at least see that. Like, d does it make up for all their other crimes? Heck no. But at least I can give them that. At the very, very least. And I wish there was more, but I'll take what little I can get. So... Yeah. So, it's worth noting that it's easy to forget this. This is the first time we've actually had an Echo Vision while Alize has been around. So, she's pretty confused about what just happened and why we were just, like, just standing there like a schmuck. And... I don't know if that ever, such an encounter ever happens early in A Realm Reborn. Um, it's been too long and I honestly don't know. And I'm really glad to see, you know, such a reaction that, yeah, us being stupefied because we're in the middle of flashback power is kind of worrisome to other people, you know? And, you know, that we're not, like invulnerable while it's happening and you know you saw very quickly that you know this guy saw an opportunity and tried to take advantage of it and she presumably killed him and is not worried about leaving his carcass in the middle of the road for some reason uh but <laughs> yeah so not only did she kill like a 400 pound tiger she just also just straight up killed the man in the middle of the road and left him okay all right. Well, that was an adventurous afternoon, wasn't it? I'm not sure why I'm going the long way to come back in here, but... I just want to make sure nobody else has any dialogue before we cut this off. Hugs? Um, no, no, we didn't dispose of the bodies. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to wait on that part until next time. So, yeah, been quite the eventful afternoon, and thankfully. Even though it was entirely off screen, we got to saw a girl kick some serious ass. I love you. You're awesome. You're cool. Alright, so thank you for watching everybody, and I shall see you next time.